While visiting X, we'll spend most of our time naturally in the Old Town. X has one of the largest outdoor markets in all of Provence on certain days of the week. They're very proud of their fountains here as well and this majestic old architecture. We're standing in the heart of Aix en Provence, a beautiful French city. It's been called the most desirable city in France to live in and it's because of the ambiance of the place. It has a remarkable history that goes back to the 15th, 16th centuries when it was a very fashionable place to live, right up through the 17th and 18th centuries. There's no really ancient history visible here. There's no Roman ruins left. And there's some cars that go through the central part of town. There are also a lot of pedestrian lanes. The pedestrian zone is very extensive, as you find in most European cities right through the heart of town lined with shops and cafes and little places where you can get a takeout sandwich or there's high quality restaurants. And the main boulevard is lined with elegant cafes, a good place to sit and while away some time. The traffic is pretty moderate here. The population is only about 150,000 in the whole city. There's a lot of young people here. They say nearly one-third of the population is students here in Aix-en-Provence. There's a large university. The city is roughly divided into an old town and a newer town. And it's the old town that has the greatest charm. Behind me is the Fountain of the Dolphins. We're in the Place Dauphin. And it's one of the 200 fountains in the city of Aix. Let's listen to the street musicians for a moment as we enjoy the sights of the quaint streets and the sidewalk market. You know, too often we're in a bit of a rush when we're traveling or in our daily life and you walk by some sidewalk musicians and you might not even stop, but it's worth a moment to listen to such a fine sound. And they don't mind if you just stop and stand there and stare at them right in front of their face. That's why they're there and they would certainly appreciate a little gratuity in return, of course. The old part of town is quite small, it's less than a half a mile across, with a number of outdoor squares for a meal or a snack, such as Place de Cadeux or the Place de l'Hôtel de Ville. It's the City Hall Square, very classic outdoor spot with the market and the cafes around it. The large pedestrian zone is an idyllic urban landscape of pretty low-rise buildings, three and four centuries old, crisscrossed by a maze of tranquil pedestrian lanes and lined with shops and cafes. There's little plazas with fountains and benches often accent the intersection of various paths. This is French living at its best. You can get it just outside the pedestrian zone and even here it's very quiet. Some cars are allowed but they need special permits, they can't park in the area, so it retains that ambiance. This historic pedestrian center is the old neighborhood. It's just north of the Coors, which is a broad boulevard we'll show you in a few moments. So the historic center is about one half mile square and it's very easy to cover in a few hours, but it offers enough variety and texture that you might be tempted to spend the entire day 
exploring. You just walk along, continue along the main pedestrian lane of the old section. It changes names a few times. It's called Aoud at first and then changes name to Fosh and you'll soon arrive at pretty little squares and some larger squares like the Hotel de Ville. You might take a stroll on the Cour. Here we see some of the larger fountains in the middle of the Cour Mirabeau, or they just commonly call it the Cour. It's kind of like the Champs-Élysées of Aix-en-Provence. You see the broad sidewalks here with the cafes. and There's some inexpensive eateries here as well as some elegant and famous restaurants along the Cour. It divides the town into the very old historic um, your right side as we're walking and then the slightly younger newer historic side the Mazarin section on the left or the south side of the core and we'll be showing the Mazarin just now and you can walk through here to get back towards the train station just a few blocks away well that's our brief look at X. It's a terrific place to visit. You don't need to spend more than half a day there. And then we continue on our way visiting the big city of Marseille. Now we're changing trains in Marseille so we figure okay well we might as well get out and take a stroll for a couple of hours and that's probably all you'll need. There's not a lot of beautiful sights in the city but the harbor is quite lovely and there's some main busy streets. This is the second biggest city in France, so it's certainly worth taking a look at it. It seems like a smaller version of Paris, really, as you walk along the wide boulevards and look at the grand buildings with statues decorating their exteriors. They have some nice shopping malls and some pedestrian lanes. They've really tried their best to fix up the city. They're still doing some ongoing road works and renovations, but a lot of this work has been finished. We have lovely malls such as this, and a very peaceful spot actually. It has a bad reputation, but we found no hint of any problems in Marseille. Very normal city with some beautiful buildings and majestic surroundings. Again, right out of Paris. It's a nice playground for the kids here. We're in the far south of France along the coast of the Mediterranean. There's a large marina. It's mostly for pleasure boats, some big yachts here and some fishing vessels. The commercial harbor has been moved to the outskirts of town so the cruise ships and the cargo ships are not pulling into the central port any longer. So you see it is a really pretty spot here with such a pretty day. Made a nice walk. We just spent about three hours in Marseille. You walk down from the train station, have a stroll and walk back and we're continuing on our way to Nice. 